Welcome back. Today is Friday, November 8, 2024, a few minutes in front of 8 a.m. Eastern. I'm Sam. We're back for another market recap. These are the levels for today, four levels and one zone up at the top. The question I'm asking myself this morning is, are they running out of steam? I said in last night's video that I would refrain from sharing any long-term analysis until Friday's recap. That would be this afternoon's video. But I will say that looking around this morning, I'm starting to see signs that they might be petering out. Maybe it's just a timeout before they try for new highs again today. But at some point, we'll likely see a pullback in a bigger way. And the timing is getting right for that to start happening soon. We can talk about that in the post-market recap later in the video. Right now, in the early morning, they are at 595.90, which is still in the middle of the area. They've been hanging out all night. The levels should be good. You know they work the clear majority of the time, but knowing how to manage the trades is half of the battle. I may have an hour or so after the opening bell to keep an eye on things myself, so if this trader is putting any money at risk, that's when it will be. By about 11 a.m. or so, I plan to close up shop and get on with my weekend. Whatever happens, we'll talk about it after the closing bell. Catch you on the other side. And we're back. It's after 6 p.m. So they tried to get to 600 today. In the email that I sent out this morning with the daily levels, I mentioned that if they aren't petering out and price ends up at that zone at the top of the board that we had today, it's probably because they're still gunning for 600. But let's approach each of the levels in turn and talk about how they would have been traded per the rules. So after giving the market 15 minutes to settle in, they got back underneath this level at 596.66. So that's cool. At that point in time, it was still entirely feasible that price was going to get pushed down some more. Maybe they would find some support at the gap left over from yesterday or the level farther down. That could be the reset that the bulls needed to keep climbing from there. So going short at this area was in line with the rules. But as it turned out, they were not out of steam yet. They got above the level, and now we're looking at things to happen on the other side of that fumble threshold. So going short right here at 9.48 or so, your short trade would have been out of the money and you would have had a fumble signal over in this area and you would have given six and a half points back to the market, reversed, price kept going up and got a four point base hit or more as they continued to climb. So now about this bounce down here. Normally this would be the place to trade this level for a recycle on the long side, but the problem is you still would have been in this short position from over here because they had not violated any of the rules. So that's kind of tricky, but this was the point over here where A, you had the fumble signal, but also it's like this is your signal, this is your clue that the bulls are probably still in charge because that was really the trade. They, they, this level was important, but it was not. It was respected here for the bounce on the long side, meaning the bulls are probably going to use that to launch off to go higher. I took this trade here, and at this point, I'm still waiting to see if they're going to go lower, and it became clear that wasn't going to happen, so I gave some money back to the market. And we're going to watch my recording, but right now we're just talking about what you would be doing if you're trading these levels per the rules. So we'll look at my trades later. I don't know if I mentioned it before, but I adjusted this level here down five points toward price. I usually add a five cent buffer as price is coming into a level, but anyway, didn't mention that. So now they're at the zone. I do not adjust the levels on zones. So keep in mind that if you were preparing to go short at this zone, price is near 600. So you had to be mentally prepared for them to overshoot this resistance area and head on up to 600 and maybe even spike it a little. With that in mind, the prudent thing to do would have been to try to get the best price and maybe sell at the top of this zone. But since we treat each level the same for the purposes of accurate metrics and are playing by the rules tracking log, we're selling at each level. So if you sold two ES contracts when the SPY hit 598.70, you would have to be prepared to sell two more if they kept going and hit 599.26. And if you were still in the trade, at this point with no base hit in your pocket. Like if you sold here, you didn't get a base hit, they kept going and you're watching price climb, you'd have to assume that there still is important resistance up higher around 600, like we said. So the likelihood of the bear starting to come into the market and start selling at big numbers like 600 is pretty high usually. So we're treating this like a process. So what would this trade have looked like if you shorted this zone? So looking for a base hit off the bottom of this zone, if you went short at the bottom here, would have been around 598.30. Obviously, they did not happen. That's the green line. The fumble threshold, the red line on the other side, that's the bracket side, the bracketed side of this level. It's less important because of how near the top of the zone that it is, which is our other level that we're activating a sell order at, assuming the price hits this you know, number at 599.26. So no fumble signal as you're out of the money on this first part of the trade. So when the SPY hit 599.26, you sell again. And that would make your average entry point become 598.98. That's the light blue line or the equivalent price in the E-minis. 
So this means you have a new profit target and a new fumble threshold. So I've adjusted the lines, the green and the red. And so these are what you're looking for for your base hit on the combined position. And you don't want price to get above and do certain things above the red level of your fumble threshold. And incidentally, that all happens when you entered the new trade here. So you sold, that's why I put the vertical line here at this point. So hope that makes sense. And now you wait. So when the price is out of the money up here, there was no danger. In fact, if I were in this trade myself and they went higher, I would have planned to sell again if they hit 600. We're just going to stick to the rules, say with the levels that were on the board from this morning. So it didn't take very long for them to come back down, give you your base hit. This whole area was overhead resistance. So they handed over a base hit on your combined position. And really, that's your playing by the rules commentary. You would have ended a little in the green, even with that six and a half point fumble from the morning. So my trade at the level did not go as planned because, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but I got pulled into a meeting around 1030. So when I jumped out, I had just had to. I couldn't babysit the, the trade. So I overshot the fumble threshold or the fumble signal and also did not reverse because I couldn't be around my computer to watch the trade. So you can watch me give back around $800 to the market. We cover the good, the bad, and the ugly here. So, and you've seen worse. But just to reiterate that the trades that we cover here in these daily recap videos, they're tracked, both the strict playing by the rules trades and my own personal trades. And this way you can form your own opinions about the effectiveness of this trading approach. You'll see this, this trade just sort of disappear at some point. When, when they get back up here, like I said earlier, this was kind of the clue. I did consider maybe bailing out and buying again here, like just reversing the trade at, a, at the break-even point, but I didn't do it. I was kind of stubborn. Let this thing get back above the fumble threshold, and when they got to this point, I bailed out. It was getting close to 1030. I had to go anyway. So I lost a little bit. I'm just going to wait for this to disappear. There we go. It's around $800. And so that was it. I couldn't do anything for the next hour. I'll just scrub ahead. So when I got back to my computer, I closed up shop and was not even around the computer when they hit this zone. But I had made my mind up not to take any more trades for the day anyway. So what does the daily chart tell us? Well, it tells me that the SPY 600 is a stone's throw away. That much is obvious, but they're in uncharted territory. So this means we don't have a reference of previous price action back in time that would help us kind of narrow down levels, but we can use other tools. But first, just notice where current price is in relation to the 20 period moving average, which is this reddish orange line. There have been times when price is farther removed from this moving average, but it doesn't usually get too far away before one of two things happen. One, price reverses the trend quickly and kind of comes back toward that 20 period moving average, or two, price kind of stalls out and goes more or less sideways for a bit. Either way, it's typically like a reset. The farther away from the 20 period that price is, the more pronounced the correction can be. I mean, look down here, really far away, pulled back. A lot of things are going on, a lot of high volume at this point, and pretty decent area as well where they found themselves. But if you just kind of look back in time, and this is more prevalent and more obvious, I think, on the weekly chart, but the farther away they get from the 20 period move average, you're going to see some type of change in the flavor of the market. It's not an exact science, but you can't deny that it happens to work out this way almost every time price gets extended away from this particular moving average. The other moving averages have different meanings in my world, but the one that is most relevant now is the 20. So that's why I'm focusing on it. So just look back in time and notice the relationship between price and 20 period. Drastic trend changes are generally more obvious here. Went sideways back into it. There's a pretty big move. We talked about that one. Went sideways, came back down. They got a, below it. I mean, you can follow this along. From here, they were so far down that this momentum and the, was so strong when they got above, they kind of overextended and came back down again. I mean, there's a lot of other reasons. I'm just kind of in isolation, just looking at this 20 period and talking about what to kind of expect. In the weekly chart, it becomes more apparent. So considering where price is right now, it's in the neighborhood of SPY 600 and getting kind of far from the 20 period moving average. So I'll let you decide if it's time for something to happen. So it's the case on the weekly chart too. And like the daily chart, where they're at in terms of timing is also important. It's also a good reason to be on the lookout for a pullback. I don't know when or if for that matter that it will happen. But remember, the other possibility is that price goes sideways for a while, like maybe hangs out under or at around 600 for a while and they build up more steam. But you can't ignore the other possibility of them falling in a bigger way. So you look at this weekly chart, and let's say in the near future they pull back. Even if they pulled back all the way to the 20 period moving average, like in the next, say, week or two, I'm just being, not saying it's going to happen, it's a complete hypothetical scenario here. That would look scary, probably, because it's over, what, 350 S&P points from where they are right now down to this 20 period moving average. I'm not saying it will happen, I don't know. I'm just pointing out that after trending a certain amount of time, markets tend to change course for a while. And those numbers are showing up in the daily and the weekly chart right now the amount of time it's taken them to get where they're at. Plus, even if they lost like 
500 points in the next few months or so, we'd still be in a bull market in the big picture. Again, I'm not making predictions. I'm not ready to go buy a bunch of puts on the SPY right now, but it's the time to start looking for signals that a bigger trend change could occur. Unless I see clear signals, I'm not going to fight the trend. But just for fun, though, imagine that next week they fall and close at or under the low of this week's up candle here. So you'd have a big red breakdown candle right next to this week's big green up candle. So what does that mean? Well, that would be a signal. That would be a reversal candle. And if it happened on high volume, which we haven't had in a while, and high professional activity, then you'd have something to trade against. Remember, the timing is right for something like that to happen. I'm not saying it is. They rarely make it that easy. Odds are, if we're due for a pullback, there will probably be signals on smaller time frame charts first. I think that's enough hyperbole. As you probably know by now, my forte is in identifying levels for intraday futures trades. I'm not really here to predict with any great confidence the next 6 to 12 month market correction, if that even happens at all. On to the tracking logs. The first one, the play in by the rules log. You can read the notes. Here's where the fumble happened. Reversed, got a base on the reversal, and then two base hits, so 12, but given back 6.5 points, and you can see where that would have landed you, depending on number of ES contracts traded. And here's my 8 points given back to the market and didn't do anything else after that. So I gave back $800 today. So that's a wrap for today and for the week. Thanks for watching and appreciate all the support and some of the emails and questions and comments that are coming in. Please keep that up. I like the feedback. If you found value in today's recap and like my brand of analysis, I'm not saying I'm right necessarily, but it's kind of good to see where you are in the big picture. I'm just going to focus on the small intraday levels for my future trades. But anyway, if you did, then you can like the video, subscribe to the channel and all that. I appreciate it. And if you're ready to get these levels to try them out for yourself, then head over to ticksandtrades.com. Thanks for watching. See you in the next recap video on Monday. Have a great rest of your day.